Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 566. That's Cinco Seis Seis of the Agostino Zynga Show. Como estas, mi amigos? How am I? Bien. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to start this show like I haven't, you know, like it's a new show. Not like I was just recording for an hour and a half, not realizing that I didn't record. And now I have to record the whole thing again. I'm just going to start like it's a fresh show. Because you have no idea why I said prior. Even though I have all the ideas of what I said prior. And I feel like I'm wasting my time. But it's not a waste of time. Because I've got your attention. And you are giving me your attention. So I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that you're here once again to hear me ramble into a microphone. Because who cares if I recorded a show prior to this. An hour and a half of absolute flames goodness. I'll just do it again. Right? If it's that good, do it again. Right? If you find one Jay-Z, find another, right? As one famous man said. Come on. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. We're back in a sector. Hope you're doing well wherever you may be. I'm doing fine. I'm doing dandy. I've been lifting weights, running a bunch, pulling, you know, myself on a rowing machine, um, running on a treadmill, doing deadlifts and push-ups, like absolutely going crazy in the gym. And I'm feeling great. I'm drinking my gallon of water, which is over there. I'm about to finish it today. I got that done. Still on a 75 hard program. Still smashing that. Day 17 or 16, I think I'm on. I started it over about four or five times. Don't ask me any questions. Let's keep it moving. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling fine. As you can tell, my hair is a bit of a puffing at the moment. I need to get it back braided again because, as I said prior, I am now a convert to the braided life. The braided life lighted my hair to kind of grow back healthy once again it allowed to grow back stronger once again and now i'm in a position where i can get it done quite regularly quite near to where i live so why not do it again so i'm gonna braid it once again i might end up doing two no i might end up doing three or four braids now because i did a two i'm just gonna try something different and see how that, how that looks and keep it pushing i would like to also get a mohawk i'm not sure what you guys think about me getting a mohawk but i want to kind of grow my hair at the back again forget the little burger here but i want to kind of grow it here at the back and kind of kind of get a mohawk because i got inspired by venetius jr who currently plays for real madrid he's got a really kind of cool mohawk look going on and they just fade this bit here on the side and it could be quite cool because mostly fades around this area a bit shit right in terms of london they're not the best uh, you can't get hd sort of like you know um tyson beckford sort of no tyson beckford what's his name oh the beckham sorry type fades they don't exist in the uk you can find them but they're usually you know um left to the flipping celebrities and footballers of this world who get those kind of you know those kind of um people that come to your house to kind of cut your hair and whatnot this is one guy who's an asian dude everyone uses footballers in terms of cutting hair but if you want to go to a local barbers you just kind of roll in the dice on that one so i was thinking if i get a mohawk right and it's kind of like you know the mohawk blah blah and you have to fade this bit the good thing about it is that there's less surface area for them to fade so by default it would mean there's less room for them to fuck up because they've only got to fade that block and the block on the other side right the little rectangle shape so it should be okay but on the flip side if you look at venetius jr's um mohawk that fade is pretty serious like you have to you have to be very skilled to be able to do the mohawk and make it look cool make it look clean you know sharp whatever it may be called and that fade is done really well if anything he's having to fade it at weird angles you're having to fade it like here and then there and then here it's a bit mad whereas fading it around here is a bit easier because you just essentially you just cut a line a bold line just kind of fade that mark or that hair into whatever this is at the top so i don't know Maybe my hypothesis is a bit weird and not correct, but that's the kind of thing that I'm kind of aiming for, aiming for going forward. I want to maybe get a mohawk. If not, go back to doing the braids. Obviously, maybe get four braids here on the top or maybe do three because last time I did just two on the top. So let's see how that goes, isn't it? Let's see how that goes. Moving on deep, moving on onto the show. I want you to speak about my home away from home, Bergheim. They've just announced or put up the program for April and they've got one date, I think, specs for May. And I am over the moon at this lineup that's happening on the Easter weekend. So they've got a lineup here for the, how do you pronounce it? Oster Club Night, which I'm assuming means Easter Club Night. And on this night, on the 16th of April, they have in the main room in Bergheim playing as follows. Boris, DJ Stingray, Dr. Rubinstein, Fedor, Freddie K, Helena Half, Jazz, LXD, LXOXO, Marcel Dietman, Natty Serres, Norman Nodge, uh, R. Moximore, R. Is it, how you say that? Roxy Moore, Steffi, Volvox. 
And in Panorama, they have the following. Armed, Carl Craig, IF, Jennifer Cardini, Ketikov, Lakuti, Massimino, Pellegri Pal Pagliara, OK Williams, Paramida, Perro, Roy Perez, Soundstream, Tama, Somu. And I am absolutely gagging to get over there sharpest and soon. Number one, because if I'm not if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, the opening hours are back to normal. So it should be closing sometime late Monday morning instead of sun Sunday night or what was it before? Or Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, because I remember no, before like the, the peak when I went like in 2019 when there's no restrictions, I think it ended on a Monday at like what? Was it like nine, nine a.m. or something on a Monday morning or something? I think. I remember walking out there really bright and early, having to get an Uber back home to my flipping Airbnb. Madness. So that's one thing that's going to be great. And then, of course, because of whatever's going on in the world now at the moment, it might not be full of tourists as much, which, again, is weird for me to say being a tourist myself. But the vibe is significantly better when it's not full of randoms, in my opinion. Again, they can't help it because it's a, it's a massive space. They have to let in some allocations of randoms in order to kind of make make sure they keep the lights on and ensure they have people spending money at the bar and whatnot. But I feel like this might be one of the best times to go, especially before the rush. And as well, it would be a good time to go to also because it won't be as cold as the times I normally go. Because I don't normally go to Berlin when it's like summerish or springtime. I usually always there around January, uh, you know, towards the months of like, you know, August onwards and whatnot. It's never around the times of like February to like July. I'm never in there around those kind of dates. So to go there around that time is going to be a bit of a blessing as well. So that should be great. The only problem thing that's the issue is obviously because it's an Easter weekend. And again, I'm a bit, you know, out of practice with that because I usually always go out of kind of, you know, peak season. The prices on Ryanair are mad. From what I've seen for the weekend, they're leaving on like the Friday, coming back on a Sunday. Um, the prices are like a hundred or something pounds. And if you go any other weekend outside of that kind of bank holiday Easter weekend, uh, they're like 50 to 70 pounds. So it's a real big jump. And again, that's without luggage. So when you add luggage onto it in terms of having an overhead luggage or whatnot, it's going to jump up to about 120, 140. So it's a bit of a mad one. Um, Ubers, so um, Airbnbs I've seen, not too shabby. I usually always go for the standard, get my own apartment. You know, no one's got time to be staying in mad rooms even though the room thing might be a bit of a bit better option. But the gap between it, I think it's like, you know, maybe £50 between having an apartment yourself or staying in an apartment with somebody else. So I'm not sure whether or not to do with that one. The only other option, I think, as a kind of cheeky one, if I want to just go to rave and come back and do nothing else, maybe just rave, get, get some kebabs and whatnot, because there's this account I follow, actually, this guy called Foodie... I think Foodie Tam or Foodie TM who actually put up a list of the best places to go and get a doona out there in Berlin so maybe you might just go to the top two places so it might just be straight to Bergheim doona, come back home, wash shower breakfast straight again, boom 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 and then come back home. If that's the case, I'm thinking I might end up going back to that hostel that I went to previously which is what? I think it was like a Sunflower hostel or something. It's next door to Bergheim. It's like literally around the corner. It's an absolute shithole though. Don't get me wrong. Um, and, and full of absolute randoms. But it's right next to Bergheim. So if you actually just want to go and have a place to kind of put your shit down, be able to shower, be able to have a coffee or whatnot, or whatever. Might have a drink of water, blah de blah And it's around the corner. Definitely check out that place. I really recommend it. Um, I enjoyed my time there, even though it was full of random. It was a bit of a shithole. I still enjoyed my, my stay there. I wasn't there for that long. I was only there for like a night because the Airbnb because I didn't book my Airbnb, Airbnb right. I was in the, I was meant to book. I didn't end up booking a night. I was meant to get there. So again, long story, long story. I'll speak about that another time. But we're looking forward to it. The lineup is pretty sick. Um, mostly looking forward to seeing Freddie K. I've never actually seen him play in Bergheim before. Obviously, him being a resident there and somebody that people always say ends up playing really um, great sets in Bergheim. That should be pretty decent. Um, Dr. Rubenstein, obviously, on her home turf also. I'd be eager to see that um, because I've heard she goes a bit crazy in that space too. The only person that's a bit of a throw-off and might kind of make me want to leave the Bergheim room to go to Panorama Bar will be this lady called Natty Sears or Natty Sears, how you, how you pronounce her name. I've seen her play twice in Bergheim and one time it was terrible and one time it was really good. And the issue is I've only noticed this. This is the first time in my whole time going there, which has been many years, where I've noticed somebody playing terribly, like a set. Normally, it's like, it might not be my taste, but it wasn't bad. And this was actually bad. And I think the issue is, when you go to a place like Bergheim, because of all 
the flipping, you know, uh, kerfuffle to go in there in terms of, you know, you don't talk in the queue, you're mainly sober, you cover your phone, you're worried about going if you're going to get let in or not. There's a lot of stress when you get in there. So I think when you do get in there, you're just kind of surrendering yourself to a night and you don't really care who's playing. You're just going to dance and have a good time for the most part. But I noticed for the first time ever, I was knocked out of my trance. Like, usually when I go in, I don't even check my phone. I'm just literally dancing my face off, going in the toilets to take a shit, dancing my face off, doing the same things, right? But it's the first time ever being there that I noticed somebody was playing terribly. It kind of took me out of the zone and it kind of made me realize my surroundings. And I had to kind of go back to the Panama bar. If I'm not mistaken, the same night I went to that, that she was playing, I think someone like a sound stream or something was playing there too. And I had to go up to Panama bar and then I got, you know, I kind of got back into the zone. I was like, cool, thank God. And I was able to kind of reconvene and kind of go back again. So I don't know, maybe it's not her fault. Maybe it was like a one-off night again, because I've seen her playing. She was really good. And I've seen her play. She was really terrible. So maybe because she's like a newer resident, I'm not really too sure if that's the case, but that's the only thing that's a bit of a concern in that regard. But it's also great because someone like myself being a DJ, that the fact that they do stock the lineups with so many residents, they don't always try and go for external people all the time. They do stock it for residents. The other person I'm curious to see play um, live, who I haven't seen playing donkey years, is Carl Craig. Last time I saw him play was maybe in the warehouse rave somewhere in like Shoreditch or something. I don't know, it might have been a place called like the Peanut Factory or something. You know those places? Those like an old venues back in the day that used to throw loads of dance music events and minimal events back in the day. That might have been a time I saw him play. And again, that might have been back when he used to play minimal. I'm not even sure if he even plays that anymore. So I'll be eager to see what he's going to be like live. Uh, Jennifer Cardini, again, I'm not a fan of the kind of Gerd Jansen cosplay stuff that she does. If you notice her play, she even kind of skanks like him behind the decks, plays similar tracks. They kind of DJ in the same way. Clearly, she's kind of inspired by him. I get it, whatever. But it's a bit of a mindfuck. But again, she's a decent DJ nonetheless. But is it somebody that I would run to to go see in Panama Bar? Probably not. But still, I'm not I'm not mad at it. Lakuti, I'm always a big fan of playing there. Roy Perez, you know, I'm a big fan boy of his. I always think he's an absolutely superb DJ. Um, Soundstream, again, another person who I'm a big fan of. I again saw at Panorama Bar. And I unfortunately, unfortunately missed seeing him at the venue that I wanted to see him play was, was Palomas. When I went to Berlin in February -ish time, um, I was able to go to Palomas to go to see the... Um, for the powerhouse night that they do there with a guy that I think the guy that puts it on his name is like Finn Johansson or something like that right and he's got a really popular blog too that I used to check back in the day and he puts on this night it's usually him and a guy called DJ Pete who's absolutely brilliant and they play usually back to back or maybe an hour each banging sets right kind of Itello disco um sort of kind of e what do you call it EBM sort of vibes it's kind of really in that sort of zone and i really recommend palomas anyway if you want to go to berlin but you don't want to be you know subjected to techno music and you want somewhere a bit fun a bit like laid back maybe more housey disco vibes definitely check out paloma bar it's in cop bus tour like the mainish kind of area where everyone kind of goes and hangs out like around the corner from the burgermeister so you know you can't not find it really great venue and um yeah i went to go to to, to that night powerhouse to go see dj pete and obviously that finn johansson dude and i want to went to see soundstream play because i've only seen soundstream play and obviously big venues like panorama but i want to see him play like an intimate venue because Paloma bar is like tiny it might it's like i think it's like i think they got two floors or three maybe three floors um and i would imagine the capacity to, of the entire building all the floors put together it might be 300 it might be 500 it's very very small so i went to see abdiza like that play in that small venue would have been sick the same way how when i saw richie horton play at fold right it was like fantastic to see such a person that's so used to playing big stages you know big rooms playing such an intimate space like madness but as i was getting there like as i was coming bloody coming up the stairs um flipping soundstream past me i was like damn it do you know what I mean so that's the only sort of cut what you call it cunting thing about it when I went to Bergheim sorry I went to Berlin in February but again you know maybe get an opportunity to see him again in April so hopefully this is something I can go to if not unfortunately I'm thinking because of all the stuff I have going on during the summer I might have to kind of hold off and only go in August or something or maybe you know September which is again going into the months I'd normally go um, I'd like to go this time around let's see if I can squeeze it in I might just do a quick one because I've never done that thing I, mean, I know some people do that thing where they just leave they go and rave and they come back they don't even go they even book in the accommodation 
which is mad, but that might be an option too if I want to do it and I want to actually go and rave and see these people play. Just, you know, go with what I want to go with. Take a backpack there with some toiletries. And if I want to have a quick little toilet armpit wash bath, I can do that in a club or something. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit grimy, but there are options if you want to do that sort of thing. So yeah, Big Up Bergheim, April calendar and program is out. So if you care about that stuff, definitely check it out if you care. Next on the list, we have this news courtesy of BBC. Absolutely barnstorming crazy news. Jussie Smollett has somehow been released from jail pending appeal. Absolutely nonsense. But also great because it's an illustration, especially in the States, that no matter your race, colour, creed, sexual orientation, as long as you have money, you can, for the most part, inoculize yourself from the regular everyday consequences that regular everyday americans have to face with when it comes to you know subjecting yourself to the justice system you can circumnavigate it you can avoid any length for any lengthy prison or jail time if you have money you honestly do and i'm really curious to know how much money the Smollett's have are they like well known in Chicago are they well known in other parts of the states do they have really old money is it all new money because I do not get this because I remember watching a sentencing and legitimately on Justice Smollett's team right his defense team whatever you call it or prosecution whatever it is right there legitimately might have been six or seven lawyers there who I would assume were like from three different firms all working at the same time it doesn't even account for the people working in the background doing the research there were at least three different firms being represented on that table and i was thinking to myself bruv this guy's been out of work for maybe two plus years since this has been happening right he's not worked ever since then pending a trial i'm assuming people you know i don't think it's because he's cancelled i think legitimately people in hollywood would legitimately give him a gig tomorrow as soon as this case is over because they just don't want to have all the extra smoke being diverted to them for sure but he's been without work and without income, you would imagine, you know, outside of maybe residuals from TV shows he was on for two plus years. Yet he has the ability to hire some of the biggest and best lawyers um, out there in America per hour, whatever it may be, whatever retainer he's got them on to get him out of jail. And on top of that, he has the ability to hire an entire security detail to escort him out of jail. County jail. No, he came out fucking, you know, um, uh, a supermax prison or something he's coming out of a county jail and he has this crazy security detail around him to make sure nothing crazy happens between him leaving the jail and heading into his suv absolutely ridiculous isn't it ridiculous in extreme anyway the article says as follows actor joseph smollett has been released from bond from jail in chicago pending an appeal against his conviction for the falsely claiming he was a victim of a hate crime last week the former empire star 39 i didn't know he was that old imagine being that old and playing those kind of games and essentially trying to start a race war so you could get a flipping pay rise on empire not even like if, for instance if this was if this was the wire the sopranos the shield um breaking bad okay it's a bit scummy but i get it genre defining legendary shows that are legitimately going to be things that you're going to be remembered for for decades and years and you know centuries on after you pass cool fine fight for it fight for that bump fight for more exposure fight to be recognized fight for more story arcs to be written about you and your sexuality whatever it is fight for it but empire empire is a show that you want to start a race war a race war over really come on bruv and he's 39 it's a grown man he's not like oh i was young and dumb and trying to make my way in hollywood 39 years old and he's doing this like come on g anyway um he was found guilty of lying to the police and sentenced to 150 days in prison following his sentencing his lawyers launched an appeal smollett was also maintained his hoax the hoax incident with two places in chicago in 2019 was real that's the glaring side of it which i don't get but i kind of understand in some way shape or form because he's an absolute psychopath but it continues he had to sign a hundred fifty thousand uh, a one hundred fifty thousand um rec recognizance bond prior to his release and made no comment as he left cook county Dale surrounded by security by his defense team said that they were very happy with his appeal justice ruling and said that Smollett was the target of a racist justice system, CBS News reports. And of course, we have to check out him leaving jail, right? Because why not? Look at this. Look at how preposterous this is. As if he's some sort of flipping president or something leaving the jail. And again, let's count the security guards around him. One, two, three, four, five in a sort of U formation with him in the middle, leaving 
jail. Come on, bruv. What nonsense is this? Like, imagine the people just going to, you know, drop off some food for their for their loved ones who might have gotten in prison because of unpaid parking fines or a DUI or just checking in on somebody that might kidnap the kid. I don't know. Whatever people do when they go into jail. Walking by and seeing this, like, what the hell is this? Like, why? Jesus Christ. All, all wearing all black. I wonder if they told them to all wear all black as they went to go pick him up. Or if that's just what they wear if you're a security guard, I'm not too sure. And of course, to match them, he took off his shirt that he had in, in what you call it, um, when he was in flipping um, court and held that in his hand. And he's now walking as well, wearing all black too, with his head shaved, you know? Behind the mask, of course, because, you know, you have to wear a mask, right? That's the most important thing. Make sure you got your mask on. Jussie, how does it feel to be free? <laughs> How does it feel to be free? Can you what tell kind us of what the past week has been like? I was say, is that got a book? He's got a book under his arm or something, right? Uh, what is that? Like a journal? Oh no, it's a journal, right? It looks like a journal. So he see what I mean. In the in the other clip, I said something like, "Oh, he for sure is going to come out and make a documentary about the justice system and how unfair it is to black and brown people, um, how you are, you know, tried by media and all this sort of stuff." And for sure, he's going to do this. So he was spent his time in there writing what scripts uh poetry song lyrics raps nonsense thing being escorted here by his car the, any, screaming at him to say to the, judge. the other thing i've noticed as well clearly is it me or the Jesus smollett walk on his toes you remember because uh, everyone i met in life that does that weird thing that they walk on their toes they're always wrong and so always a bit you know and he does that thing look where he walk he's kind of walking on his toes is it or is it me jesse how does it feel to be free He's kind of got that toe walk. You know what I mean? I think I might have it here, actually. Where is it? Yeah, see? This walking on, see, walking on toes. <laughs> and for some reason, it all completely has autism. I don't know if it is autism, but look at this this um, YouTube video thumbnail. Toe walking in children is a sign of trouble? Question mark? <laughs> I didn't know this was a form of autism. Is that true? Is this a form of autism? Look at the corrections they have to put in your feet to make you not walk on your toes. Oh, my God. Imagine going to school with these on the back of your foot. I'd rather walk on my, my toes. Fuck that, man. I'm not having you flipping put these correctors in my... Oh, my God. Bless them. Look what they have to wear, these flippers, in order to correct how you walk. What in the hell is that? <laughs> but, yeah, I think Justice Smollett might walk that way. I'm pretty sure he does. Or, he might, or maybe I'm, I'm bugging out. Can you tell us what the past week has been like? Look at that. Is that? Just Somewhere like you can't really see it. But, yeah. Oh, look at the ratio, bruv. The, what you call it? The public has spoken, isn't it? 354 down votes to 185 up votes. 184, so up votes. Clearly, the people do not like this guy whatsoever. And according to the article, it says his team argued his imprisonment for what was described as a low level non violent crime was excessive and that his health and safety were in danger while he remained in prison. So, that little show he did at the end of his sentencing was definitely part of a tactic, I feel like. Bravo to him in that regard. They also questioned why he had been imprisoned after a previous prosecutor dropped the charges against him in 2019. But that was Kim Fox, isn't it? She's corrupt as hell. So, it makes sense why they tried him again. It quotes here it says, Regards to what you think about the case, <laughs> I love how they're saying that regardless of what you think. No, what we think about the case is the whole case. That's the whole point of why we're here. If we didn't think he lied, it wouldn't matter. Do you know what I mean? But the fact that he lied, that plays a big part in the fact that we don't believe what he said. So him now maintaining his innocence and now being let out on bail under the um, under the illusion that he's an innocent party, that he has no previous record. Like, get out of here. Get out of Dodge, bruv, regardless of what you think about the case. No, that is the whole case. Anyway, the real question here is, should a black man, oh my God, imagine the hubris on an individual to still pull out the race card when you try to incite a race riot in order to get a bump in your salary on a shitty TV series. Imagine the hubris. Imagine. The real question is, should a black man be um, walked into jail for a class four felony? Some do, mate. Some black men that don't have 17 lawyers do end up in jail on class four fel felonies. I'm pretty sure that is the case. I am pretty sure there are many black men in jails across the United States on class four felonies because guess what? They can only afford a public defender or, you know, or it's assigned to them for free for fuck's sake. Like, come on, man. 
Shame on you if you think that they should. Shame on us. That's a disgrace. That okay, that has to be that black guy, right? That black guy lawyer that's got a weird accent. Um, Nene Uche. Shame on us. We're a disgrace. <laughs> i love it i love the brazen nature of lawyers man it just oh i love it i love it um the prosecuting office said that the claim that his health and safety were at risk was inaccurate so it was in was incorrect and that he has been in protective custody while in prison so not only does he start a race war and gets off of it from it scot-free he then ends up in jail for only 150 days which people should have said he would have spent more in jail because he lied and he has no um sense of shame he didn't admit fault or say he was lying he gets out. Oh no, so he gets put back in jail, sorry. He gets put in jail. And somehow he has protective custody because what? He's a celebrity. And it's still not enough. It's still not enough for him. Terrible people. The actor who is black and gay. <laughs> it's, it's incredible, isn't it, right? After all, I'm sure the guys worked hard. Many failed auditions, many sleepless nights, remembering words for shows that didn't get picked up, disappointment after disappointment. But then the only thing that people are going to remember you for is lying about a hate crime and the fact that you're black and gay. Those are going to be your lasting legacies, not how talented you are and the fact that you're a multi-hyphenate who probably can sing, dance and rap and all that other good stuff, right? And act and whatnot, right? Clearly a talented dude, but the one thing they're going to remember you for is that you lied about a hate crime and that you happen to be black and gay. Like, come on, man. Imagine being reduced to that. Imagine being reduced to that. So, so bad. It continues. Um, he said the attacker shouted racial slurs, a, a Trump slogan, and dumped a chemical substance on him and tied a noose around his neck while he was walking late at night in January 2019. Do you remember that bit? That was the bit that really threw everything off for me. Not, not only were they carrying a noose, which is weird, they also had a bottle of bleach in their hand that they were ready to douse any black man what does bleach do what's that what's the point of bleach is that to like light you on fire is that to turn your skin white on some flipping you know um bashment artist type of vibe like what's the point of carrying bleach around you if you're a supposed white nationalist does that make any sense or is the fact that the bottle is white i don't know is there flipping proud boys bleach does that exist do proud boys have their own fucking version of bleach that they use that they douse people in once they're going and doing their fights and whatnot i don't know uh, it continues, police opened an investigation to the incident, but later charged Smollett with filing a false police report saying he had staged the assault. Man, absolute G in it. That performance at the end probably um, paid for his freedom or played or played a huge part in the, getting him to secure his freedom. I would imagine so, because that's absolutely heinous, heinous and extreme. But anyway, what do I know? What do I know? Next on the list, um, as a follow-up in terms of the cases that I feel like gripped our attention during the pandemic, there's been a slight update in terms of the court of public opinion concerning the case between Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion, where it's alleged that Tory Lanez shot Megan Thee Stallion in a car after they spent some sort of mdma field night out with Kylie Jenner and some other non-described people, allegedly. Who knows what happened? So, according to this page called Pop Faction, Drake and Rihanna both followed both sorry unfollowed megan and sally on instagram now in normal world like where we you and i live this isn't a big issue you unfollow and unfollow who you want you keep it moving you like who you don't want you block you who gives a shit but in celebrity world a follow an unfollow a like a comment is usually a big sign in terms of um how you are viewed in terms of the you know in terms of the flipping arena of celebrities, your relationship with certain people, where you're heading to, blah, 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 blah. Those play a big part into kind of driving the narrative of your celebrity, celebrity hood, whatever it may be called. And I remember, if you were paying attention, some of you weren't because who cares, right? Because this, this case is fucking boring. I understand. But I remember there was a time, maybe a few months back, where LeBron James and Justin Bieber both acknowledged and posted content containing Tory Lanez on their social media feed, or they allowed themselves to, to be taking a picture with him, you know, in terms of Justin Bieber. And if I'm not mistaken, LeBron James, again, I'm not a big basketball watcher or anything, but I've seen some of his content on social. And he does this thing where when new music comes out, he'll preview it by listening to it, you know, on Instagram live, recording himself rapping along to the lyrics or not remembering the lyrics, or he'll post a screenshot of the track he's listening to while he's maybe in a gym training or something. And I remember quite clearly, I'm not sure which album it was, which is, you know, an irony in itself, but he posted a screenshot of himself listening to one of Tory Lanez's new albums. It might have been the, the most recent one or the one before that. 
that was a bit of a hmm if he's doing that that's obviously a sign that maybe Tory might be innocent because you know LeBron James is LeBron James he's a corporation in itself he's represented by or he represents many different brands he's responsible for a lot of different people he's got his own companies too i'm sure he's not gonna just you know co-sign somebody who is accused of such a heinous crime if he doesn't think that they're innocent then on the other side you have justin bieber and i remember there was a clip or image or a picture of justin bieber in the studio with tory lanes now that to me was no indication that maybe tory might be innocent because someone like a justin also you wouldn't imagine would be willing and open to just stand next to somebody who is accused of something as heinous as Tony Lenz was accused of. Which then leads us to this story of Drake and Rihanna both unfollowing Megan Stallion on Instagram, which again, wouldn't be an issue because it's hard to really read into much to into his unfollow or following things because we'd never really know if the person followed them in the first place. But according to this Instagram account and people's screenshots, it looks like there was acknowledgement that Drake did follow her at one point and so did Rihanna and they both unfollowed her at some point in 2022. The screenshot here shows on one side Drake following her um, you know, and commenting some tweets about what she did and in 2022 obviously not unfollow following her again and the same with Rihanna on her page too. Next slide you've got people on Twitter saying as follows Rihanna unfollowed Megan and removed her from her Fenty site just when I thought my day couldn't get any better it just did clearly somebody that's not a fan of Megan another person says as follows I don't see a hotties calling Rihanna bitter and old that she unfollowed Megan they seem to be quiet as fuck which I think people are calling out because maybe um, they're saying that about Nicki Minaj, I'm not really too sure. Another quote of somebody says, do you guys think Rihanna is jealous of Megan's success and collab with Dua, old and bitter, question mark, with a T emoji, I guess, and some eyes. I'm not sure what that means. Another person says, Rihanna and Drake now unfollowed Megan Thee Stallion. Another person says here again, Rihanna removed Savage Fenty collab with Megan Thee Stallion from her website and unfollowed her. Drake also, and Joe Budden claims there is now a video of the incident that occurred that night and Tori Lynch allegedly assaulted Meg, which is interesting. There's an actual video of what actually happened. That's interesting to see. Another one shows um, a screenshot, I guess, of the Savage Fenty site and somebody typing in Megan Stallion's name. And imagine if you're an ambassador for Fenty, you probably get your own little page or maybe your own little edit page that you put together. And I guess if you're an ambassador that you should have one on there. And the fact that she doesn't is maybe a sign that, you know, these celebrities know more than they're letting on or maybe they're just updating their website you know what i mean this could be complete nonsense who knows or she might have accidentally unfollowed her on instagram i don't really know but it is an interesting slight development going forward in terms of these kind of cases that get to our attention during the pandemic and let's see what happens man i'm really curious to see what happens with megan more so because the tory punishment is, is easy if he did do it bury him under bury him under the jail you know his career is finito most people will probably turn their back on him we get it cool but if it's proven in the court of law that more likely than not Tory didn't shoot her even though Megan maintains he did which would mean Megan's lying what happens to her do all those awards that she was given out of sympathy get taken back because she got like free Grammys or something does she does she justify getting free Grammys somebody of her talent level skill level artistry should she really have three grammys maybe one for one of those tracks that she did maybe with beyonce nikki cardi b i don't know maybe one of those kind of collab tracks should maybe have a grammy cool but as an artist does she really um command or kind of demand free grammys really i wouldn't think so so if that's the case what happens then on the back of that because she got a lot of those awards off the back of being a black woman who was you know the victim of gun violence if that isn't the case i don't know man i don't know i'm not a fan for people to get their awards taken away from them but those awards were definitely won under a false premise you would imagine if she was found to be guilty of lying but can you be found guilty of lying in a court of law or will they just say under probability of under likelihood of probability or whatever more likely not he didn't shoot i don't know i don't know what's going to come out in a case going forward but i'd imagine if you're tory lanes you would definitely want it to be in writing that you were found innocent so that you could take that paper and go to Apple and say, you have to put me back on a playlist. Like, put me back on a playlist. Stop trying to black blackball me out of the industry because a court of law said I'm innocent. Let me have a career again and feed my family. You would probably want that. Or oh, maybe you want Megan to come out publicly and say, he didn't shoot me. After saying on Instagram Live that she did, you know what I mean? That might be a big deal as well. So I don't know what we're going for, but yeah. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe it's nothing. Who knows? We shall see. We shall see. So moving on and moving on up, I thought I'd update you guys all on the Lord of Cringe. And if you're wondering, Agostino, who is this Lord of Cringe? 
It's Lex Friedman, of course, my best friend and somebody who I have said beforehand that I'm conflicted about because I legitimately am a big fan of his podcast. I listen to it legitimately every week. I'm always checking out the clips. Um, it's legitimately one of the best researched, I feel like, podcast out there especially when it comes to interviews he actually asked some very thoughtful questions just look at the opening question that lex asked mark zuckerberg during their interview he completely disarmed him he got him to chuckle a bit and created a viral moment out of it right genuine raw emotive you know sincere like cool dude he comes across as a cool dude but for whatever reason outside of his podcast he comes across like an absolute lame an absolute turbo dork an absolute loser and somebody who you can't figure out if he's being legit or if he's trolling you. A good example of are his tweets that went out recently pertaining to the, you know, the current war going on with Ukraine and Russia. And he says as follows, I'm so grateful to have food, shelter, health, and be surrounded by amazing, compassionate people. I will never take this for granted because at any moment it can all go away. Oh, really? I never knew that, Lex. Thanks for letting us know. Next tweet. Some things I hope the 21st century is remembered for. Hope, love, hope. You know, the common themes around Lex. First space colony established. Okay. First sentient robot is built. Okay. Definitive contact with alien life. Okay. Cure and prevention of major diseases. Cool. No world wars. No world wars. Really, Lex? Never before reached epic levels of fun. This is where I was just enough. Never before reached epic levels of fun. Who do you hang around with? Who are your friends? Who raised you? I know who. Silicon Valley types. That's who would say a phrase like that, right? A, a person that carries a MacBook under their arm. A person that's got post-its over the top of their MacBook. A person that thinks a stand-up should last an hour. A person who walks around their local San Fran neighborhood with no shoes on, barefooted because they want to center themselves to the earth. A person who seriously thinks all bird sneakers are as good as Nike's. A person who has a flipping Starbucks order the size of a, the, you know, the length of a flipping um, shopping list of the things that they need. Minus that, soy this, this, that, bloody blah, blah. That's the kind of person who would say, never before reached epic levels of fun. What does that even mean? What is fun to these guys? Eating eating barbecue and drinking whiskey with Joe Rogan. That's fun to you. Going to see those guys perform stand-up. That's your epic levels of fun. Recording podcasts. Epic levels of fun. Hey? Waking up in the morning at 5 a.m. to go and run with flipping David Goggins running down your ear. That's fun. Sitting in a cold bath. Fun. Wanking yourself over the new Apple product. Fun. Talking about AI in, in, you know, forever and ever. Fun. Debating about a flipping Tesla bot and thinking the Tesla bot is going to save humanity when it probably is going to kill us all. Fun. Like, oh my God, this guy is infuriating, bruv. And it's so annoying because he's such a lame off the podcast of how he presents himself. But on paper, he shouldn't be. He speaks multiple languages. He's Russian. Um, he wears those black suits. He's got a black belt in jujitsu. Friends with Joe Rogan. Wildly successful podcast. Lectures at MIT. All those tick, 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 tick. Bad boy, bad boy, bad boy. But instead you see these tweets, you're like, lame, 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 lame. Like, God damn it. And another one here. Another in the series of lame tweets. This is a Hall of Famer. Cringe, lame, gargling of the flipping balls and nuts. Like, balls and nuts. You know, you know what I mean. Look at this tweet. I invite at Zelensky, UA, who I'd imagine is the official account of the flipping president of flipping Ukraine, and Kremlin, E, the official account of Russia, each to have separate podcast conversations with me. Of course. Of course. Me. How the hell can you see what's happening? Again, next line. I'm half Ukrainian, half Russian, now American. How the hell, as a half Ukrainian, half Russian person, can you see what's happening in Ukraine and seriously sit there and think, this thing that we do, again, I do it at a much lower level, way less views, not as successful, you know, whatever, all those things. What 
Yes, I get it. But essentially, we're talking into microphones and beaming this stuff on all these different platforms for shits and giggles for the most part. How could you feel like this medium that we're in right now, this fucking medium is somehow going to stop a war in flipping Ukraine? Is somehow going to stop Russia from bombing, flipping children hospitals, maternity wards, office buildings, residential areas? How the hell do you think it's going to stop us seeing images of flipping, you know, random Ukrainian soldiers being murdered in forests somewhere with no one there to help them? How do you think that's going to stop that? Tell me. Tell me. How does that make any sense? How does that make any sense? How does it make any sense that you think this is going to change anything? And it's not like he's saying, oh, I feel like conversations will get us closer to healing our wounds and bringing us closer together and moving stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 cool. Let's say that's the case. All right. Let's set up a podcast for these guys to talk about the situation and we can maybe get the public to ask them questions. But no, it's not even that he's saying he wants to set up a podcast so they can talk to themselves. Or so they can talk to each other. He wants to be in the middle of it. He what he thinks he should be out in flipping Zelensky so that what they could get him a plane to go over to flipping Russia and bring his fucking black curtains along with him and go and record a fucking podcast. Oh, better yet, let's schedule a flipping a link up on flipping iCalendar, a Zoom kind of call, so he can go and talk this over and make sure that we don't bomb each other anymore. Come on, brother. Why are you so lame? Why are you so uncool off of the podcast? Why in that medium, you're quite cool and somebody you should maybe rate, but then off of it, you're an absolute turbo dork. Why is that? Maybe he is a turbo dork and generally that's what it is. But I'm conflicted because legitimately, I love his podcast. His clips channel is amazing. The audio podcast of itself is great. The way he intros the show, the way he kind of puts it together, the guests he has on, really eclectic, wide-ranging people intellectual politicians designer all these different people he gets on there great amazing podcast but the dude himself is a lame in the in the in the i don't know turbo lame gold medal lame gold medal lame record-breaking lame look at this stuff i'm half you half ukraine half russian now american let's talk love is the answer oh my god God, you can tell he doesn't have any normal friends. You can tell all his friends, you know, by God's grace, because he's been given this opportunity and he's worked hard at it. He only hangs around with billionaires, um, intellectuals, authors, novelists, scientists, teach whatever people that are legitimately talk for a living and who think that their ideas are really going to save the world, right? They're not. Your ideas don't save the world. The world is more complicated than whatever love is the answer fucking means. The world's more complicated. And the world is full of pain and misery more so on a day-to-day -day on a day-to-day -day thing than anything else. Come on, man. What the hell was this guy talking about, man? Love is the answer. Sod off. Sod off. Had enough of him. Had enough. So annoying. Annoying to the tip. Tip, 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 top and annoying. And again, it's annoying because I fucking love the show, but I can't stand the guy on social. He's annoying. And this, I don't know if this is arrogance. Um, what is it? If it's ego, hubris. I don't know what this is that legitimately makes you feel as if like your podcast is going to stop wars. Like that is nuts to me. Like it's not nuts to you. Doesn't that sound absolutely insane? Like what's he talking about? Why would your podcast stop anything? Who gives a shit about you? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, oh my God. I'd love to legitimately feel that self-important. I'd love to feel as if what I do has meaning to so many different people. Like, yeah, I'm changing the world. Nah, I might provide some entertainment to some of you. Some of you might like, some of you might dislike, some of you might leave good comments, some of you might leave bad comments. It is what it is. But I'm not sat here thinking, yeah, I'm going to change the world. People are going to see my podcast and they're going to think, you know what? I'm going to go Berghain. Like, no, for the most part, you sit here for flipping shits and giggles like I do for everyone else. Or you hate watch it or whatever. It's not to change anything meaningful in the real world because that is far more complicated than recording a flipping podcast and uploading it onto flipping Libsyn and YouTube. Come on, man. Do yourself a favor, bruv. God damn it. These people annoy me so much. But I love them so much too. How is that possible? How is that possible? Let me know in the comments down below if you love and hate somebody the same way that I love and hate Lex Friedman. Please let me know. And again, I don't hate the guy. I don't. I don't. I just dislike his personality on social media. It's just annoying, man. Like, ah, oh, stop being so lame. Like, be cooler. Come on. You got a black belt, man. Be cooler. 
What's wrong with you, bruv? Ugh. Anyway, I had to calm myself down a bit there. Hopefully, I'm back now and <laughs> not as mad as I was before about Lex Friedman because that's a bit G-A-Y of me. Anyway, so let's move on. Move on, move on, move on deep. What else we'll talk about here? Uh, uh, what's over here? Yeah, it's about this. Oh, so I was thinking the other day, right, about... Thinking slightly about the whole like Kardashian, the Variety article, where essentially in in kind of run up to announce the relaunch of the Kardashian show, which is an absolutely genius move, right? Again, I don't watch the show, no interest in reality show and TV in general. It's not kind of my vibe. But if I'm not mistaken, they announced like they made a big kerfuffle and a big mm, stink noise about them ending the show in the first place. Then only a month later, when they got a ridiculous bag, I'm assuming, of Hulu, they didn't announce, oh, psych guys, we're back again. The story never ends. So, they, you know, they're just never going to go away. It is what it is. Cool. Do your thing. And people love their show. So, match made in heaven. But if there's ever been a better way to, you know, draw up the hype about a show, it's to just to illustrate just how kind of warped and self-absorbed you are by saying the comment that Kim did, right? Where she said, essentially, oh, people don't work hard enough, right? Was it this one, right? Where was it here? Let's play, let's play the clip. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with people that want to work. And for me, that I think is their superpower. Because again, I'm not a fan of the show, don't know anything about them. I've not watched a single episode of the show in full in my life and never probably will. But from the clips I've seen, it's not like other reality TV shows where they try to create drama. Like Kitchen Nightmares, Big Brother, Dragon's Den, um, X Factor, American Idol, whatever. These shows, they create scenarios where to kind of get you to feel a certain emotion, to get you off your seat, to do, oh my God, I can't believe you said that, she said this. For the most part, from what I've seen the Kardashians, it's them just following these very somewhat vapid, materialistic, dense women around LA as they kind of navigate through life, right? Raising families, starting businesses. That's it. It's just that really. It's not really anything else crazy, not anything else complicated. People seem to love it. And for the most part, they seem to love it because they have essentially created their own reality. They've decided that the world around us right now, this material world that we all have in front of us, that's not enough. That's not what I want to be limiting myself to. Because just look at them, right? Look look at all three of them. They've got image here of all three sisters. They've essentially come out of their mother's womb and like, you know what? I'm not happy with the way that I look. I want to look more than what I am now. I want to create myself into the image that I feel like really represents who I actually am. And now we've all kind of had to believe it with them, right? Because I don't think any of them has really come out i don't think so maybe i'm not mistaken but if i'm not mistaken none of them so far has come out of these three sisters we have they're the main ones and said yes i have got surgery done here and there and again not anyone's business but they've kind of gaslight us into a position where we have to basically agree that they've not got any work done or we are what what's that word called um we are denigrating women right we're kind of diminishing their beauty making them feel less down blah 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 so it's a pretty clever tactic in that regard but it got me thinking about this random screenshot that i saw from this account that i follow on instagram called who is celebrity vice one of the best accounts i follow on instagram we really recommend you go check it out i'm pretty sure it's private so you might have to get you know you might have to wait for a while to get approved and you might not get approved because the person behind it is very tight about who kind of sees and views his content it's all done very well i'm a really big fan of the content regardless but he seems to have a real bug in his bonnet or fawn in his heel, whatever it may be, with the hidden account, right? Hidden.ny on Instagram. Same as I do. I think it's a lame account. Not really a fan of it. From the moment I saw that, you know, news or that clip of him, you know, putting together a flipping Excel sheet list of cool things that Drake should buy and shit like just lame dork upon dork flipping connections. I, I hate the whole thing. Cool. Regardless, we move. There's a screenshot here of on who separate devices account which looks like i guess an instagram story from that hidden and wise account where somebody asked him a question right on instagram and they said oh what's your day in the life of hidden and why page owner how's it like and he writes as follows right this kind of paragraph of how his day-to-day -day is kind of managing an instagram account right managing an instagram account producing an instagram curating an instagram account whatever you want to call it and here's how he kind of puts in his own words I wake up around 12. <laughs> I begin posting, watch TV, 
drink lots of coffee, I eat something, I sit on the sofa and look at things online, I eat more, I do emails, what that means, I don't know. I work on a current project, what that means, I don't know. What, selecting green on the colorway of something you want to put on, who knows? I walk around the Soho, eat out, play Pokemon, watch YouTube videos, go to sleep. Somehow, he has tried to make us believe that curating an Instagram profile of images that he's found on the internet that aren't even his own regurgitating stuff that's on other pages too not coming out of any kind of original content in any way shape or form putting a shitty h on some socks and on a pair of flipping clerks is somehow equivalent to what running a flipping media agency running a creative studio um being the flipping you know head person at a brand or something or a producer at a tv session like what the hell is this what the hell is this you wake up at 12 and somehow you manage to fit all that stuff in. Cap. You wake up at 12 and somehow, you know, you work on emails. Uh, I don't know. You work on your current pro What's What is the current project? Tell me what the current project is. Please tell me what the current project is. Please. What is the current project that requires you to spend that much time on your computer? Tell me. Tell me, please. Absolute bullshit. But I think that's the key to life. I think the key to life is to create your own reality. I think for us, of us who are, for those of us who are kind of awake, who are sentient, <laughs> who are anchored in reality. That's what holds us back because we are limited by what's around us. We, we're the ones, we're the kind of people that sit around and say, you know what? I can't apply for that CEO job at Carhartt. I can't apply for that marketing manager job at Coca-Cola because I don't have enough experience. Why don't you? Why don't you? If you see that listing on LinkedIn and you can click apply and you have a CV and a covering letter, why not just apply? Fuck it. Yeah, you only have a couple of years experience working in a, you know, in a flipping graphic design studio and you're currently working part time in a coffee shop and you haven't touched Photoshop in 10 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just apply anyway. You never know what's going to happen. I'm sure some of you have worked with people who have been, you know, who you've kind of sat there and thought, how the hell did you get hired for this role? You have no qualifications to do what you're doing. I'm sure you've worked around with people before. I know I have. So why can't you be that person? Why can't you also reap the rewards of living in your own reality? Because these people are Kidden and Y and the Kardashians. They're kind of on the, they're kind of two sides of the same coin. They've created their own realities and now we are existing within them. So if he tells us he wakes up at 12, he does begins posting, I watch TV and he makes it sound like he's some, you know, media mogul, this creative director, CEO, founder type dude because he runs an Instagram page. We have to believe him because the reality is true. He has collaborations we see on Hypebeast and High Snobiety. He has pop-up shops here, magazines maybe, record, I don't know, whatever he's doing. You see these you see these kind of physical, real-life manifestations of the things that he's talking about. So whatever he's saying, he must be doing something right. Something right. Because he's kind of, you know, created this entire reality for himself where he is essentially the second coming of what, Splay or something. That might be the way forward. That might be the way forward in life. We might be missing out on a trick there because we're so obsessed with being real. Oh, she got work done. She did this. So what? You get work done too. Get yourself a cup. Get yourself a set of double Ds. Get yourself a dumper in the back there because maybe that is the key to allowing you to go to the next level because you're too centered in reality. You're too, you're too aware of what you look like and not wanting to put a bad message out there and standing for something. Fuck standing for something. Fuck having morals. Fuck all that shit fuck all that shit chase the bag create your own reality and cash the f in or cash the f in cash the fuck in. i'm always saying i'm saying f now but you get what i mean i think that's the key to life i really do think that's the key to life because again you look at these next slides i'm not sure if this stuff is real but he's got some hoodie that he designed here with the kind of a flip on the mtv logo which is hilarious i wonder how long that took to make and then he's got a screenshot here where he says do me a favor please right the guy who's made a career out of fucking doing the least amount of work for the most amount of profit is now asking his audience to flip in what? Um, uh, to, to lend their ear without payment and help him to kind of fine tune his design. He's not even, he doesn't even have the confidence and the conviction in his own designs to just put it out there and see how it runs. You have to help him out there, crowdsource the final decision making process. Please help me decide the colorway of this drop. Just drop it in that colorway, who gives a shit? It's a fucking flip of a shitty logo. Just drop the colorway, who cares? Um, I'd like to do one and get the most yeses. Oh, whatever, man. Another screenshot says, design competition. First place, your design is manufactured and we split profits. Oh my God, 
this guy is an absolute prick. But no, it makes sense though. Create your own reality. Next screenshot. Um, somebody posted, I guess a designer called um, Oculage. Oc Oc wow, thanks for completely stealing my graphic and adding the H in a circle and not giving me any credit. Very classy. Oh. <laughs> Create your own reality. I created the logo. You didn't. You're lying. Fake news. Next slide. He says here, what's this? I've done everything. <gasps> oh, okay, this is him justifying his existence, I guess. Sorry. Him justifying his existence is as follows. Who? Oh, I've done every single post on this page alone. Bravo. Give him an award. Ray Kawakubo reincarnated. Nobody else has ever logged into or posted every single thing. I'm a regular guy. I moved from London to NY five years ago. No one cares um, to be with my American girlfriend. Cool, bruv. You have sex. Congrats. I was doing odd jobs and couldn't find my place. Nobody wanted to hire me. <laughs> this page actually used to be called I Want to Make Your Merch. Oh, my God. Next slide. Sorry. Hiccups here because he's talking so much shit. Do the, to do the blogging. Bad days gone day. Oh, bad days, good day. <gasps> Sorry, birthday's wedding. I've even posted whilst getting stitches in my hand at hospital. This this guy, man. Um, I post while I'm I'm running machine on the gym. It's the first thing I do when I wake up, and last thing I do before I sleep. I I think I uh, the thing I think about when I I don't want to do it. Oh my hiccups. Sorry, mate. My hiccups are bad right now. Let's continue. Um, the thing I think about. Uh, sorry, the thing I think. Uh, sorry, let's continue again. The thing I think about when I don't want to do it is the way this fashion and art music stuff made me feel when I first found it as a almost four years old posting. Almost four hours, four years of posting, eight to 12 in one time, single day might need a break soon. Okay, this is a mock-up of like a hidden Rolex collaboration you've got. Cool. Anyway, again, create your own reality because I'm hiccuping too much. I don't want to keep you for too long. The point is create your own reality Fuck the reality you live in. That's the way to become successful. If you don't do that, you're going to lose. If you don't do that, you're going to lose. Oh my God, the hiccups are crazy. Anyway, I'm going to end it there because I'm about to die. Thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. <laughs> if it's the first time tuning in. Yeah, let's just forget all the outros. Thanks again for tuning in. Take a piece. Peace, peace. Take a piece. Oh my God, so horrible.